Today in this lesson, we're going to review two narrative tools, punctuating dialogue and paragraphing effectively. Today is really about you showing us what you can do as a narrative writer. We want to see all of the tools that you have in your tool chest. But the two that we absolutely need to see you doing correctly today are punctuating dialogue and paragraphing effectively. I want to use um, some excerpts today from a novel that I read this summer called Refugee by Alan Gratz. This is a beautifully crafted novel about three different refugees, one um, during Nazi Germany during World War II, um, one during the Cuban Revolution in the 1990s, um, and then a third um, in current day Syria. So let's look at this excerpt and let's start to look at what is Alan Gratz doing as, as a narrative writer that we are, are some of the tools that we actually already have that we can use in our narrative writing. Across the room, Joseph's little sister, Ruth, was still asleep. Joseph tried to relax. Maybe he'd just been having a nightmare. Something in the darkness outside his room moved with a grunt and a scuffle. Someone was in the house. Joseph scrambled backward on his bed, his eyes wide. There was a shattering sound in the next room. Quish! Ruth woke up and screamed, screamed in sheer blind terror. She was only six years old. Mama, Joseph cried. Papa! Towering shadows burst into the room. The air seemed to crackle around them like static from a radio. Joseph tried to hide in the corner of his bed, but shadowy hands snatched at him, grabbed for him. He screamed even louder than his little sister, drowning her out. No! Joseph screamed. No! So the first two tools that we see Alan Gratz using um, that we need to see today are paragraphing and dialogue. So I want you to notice how short these narrative paragraphs are. That's one of the things, that's one of the ways that we can tell that something is a narrative text versus an informational or an argumentative text. Narrative writing has short, short, one to two to three to four sentence paragraphs. Very rarely do we have these really hefty, long paragraphs. You're going to see them every once in a while in your novels or your short stories. But most of the text should be these short, short paragraphs. So we want to see that today in your writing. We also want to see you using dialogue. So Alan Gratz is using dialogue here when Joseph screams, right? Mama, Joseph cried. Papa, no, Joseph screamed, no right? We actually hear the character screaming. We're, we're, um, Alan Gratz is using dialogue to do that. So we also see him using some of the tools that you um, practiced using last year. And we see him creating heat, right? Creating excitement or anticipation as this, as this excerpt builds. We see him using imagery, right? He's painting a picture for us. We, we can hear it. We can see it, right? We, we hear what the character is hearing. We see what the character is seeing. We sense or feel what the character is feeling. We see him slowing down time. We see him using figurative language. I love this example of figurative language here. The air seemed to crackle around them like static from a radio, right? He's using a simile here. So let's start with paragraphing. So what are our rules for narrative paragraphing? How do we make sure that we know when to start a new paragraph as a narrative writer? So here's my trick. When in doubt, create a new paragraph. It, there's actually very little. We have, some, we have some guidelines for when to start new paragraphs as a narrative writer, but really the, the rule is keep it short, right? Keep these short paragraphs short, 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 right? And you're gonna be good. Your, your piece of writing is gonna look like a narrative. But here are some guidelines for when to start a new paragraph. So start a new paragraph absolutely if there's a new speaker. So if there are two different people and they all, they, they both talk. So for example here, if we had um, uh, Mama Joseph cried, Papa, right? Say that Ruth um, screamed afterwards. No, Ruth screamed. Um, that can't be in the same paragraph as where Joseph cries, right? It needs to be a separate paragraph if there's a new speaker. Um, anytime you want to make the reader's eyes move, right? So, for example, let's look here. When we have, um, right, he's, Joseph um, is sitting here sleeping, right? And then something moves in the darkness outside his room. Alan Gratz wants us as the reader to move our eyes to outside the room and to notice something in the darkness moving, right? He wants us to move our eyes. 
Um, so that's one of the ways that you can help the reader really follow your story is actually through paragraphing. You can make them move their eyes to see um, what, what you want them to look at. Start a new paragraph, you want to create emphasis. Um, towering shadows burst into the room, right? I'm creating emphasis here. I want that to be a new paragraph. Or if I'm changing topic, right? Anytime you're changing topic or you're changing location or you're changing um, whatever, whatever you want the reader to see, um, make a new paragraph. So there are some guidelines, but really, when in doubt, just start a new paragraph. Keep it short. Um, let's look at how we punctuate dialogue. So I want to use another excerpt from Alan Gratz's novel. So this is just right afterwards, um, and it has a little bit more dialogue in it that we can look at. So, no, Joseph screamed. No, the shadows threw him to the floor. Another shadow picked up Ruth by the hair and slapped her. Be quiet, the shadow yelled and tossed Ruth down on the floor beside Joseph. The shock shut Ruth up, but only for a moment. Then she wailed even harder and louder. Hush, Ruthie, hush, Joseph begged her. He took her in his arms and wrapped her in a protective hug. Hush now. So one of the things, before we look at the rules, one of the things that I sometimes see you do um, as a writer that I don't want to see is I see this first thing, right? Here's the no, right? I see you tell, telling the reader that a character is speaking rather than actually having the character speak. So dialogue is when the character actually speaks, right? Be quiet, the shadow yells and tossed Ruth down on the floor beside Joseph. But sometimes I see this, the shadow told Ruth to be quiet, right? You're, you're telling me that the character is doing that rather than showing me that. So I, I don't wanna see that in your narrative writing today. So here's to rule number one. If someone says it or thinks it, you need to put it in quotation marks. So here's the easy one, right? If someone says it or thinks it, it needs to be in quotation marks. Let's delete that guy. So, no, Joseph screamed, right? That's in quotation marks. Rule number two, the punctuation goes inside of the quotation marks. So, if you have a period or an exclamation mark like you do here, um, or a question mark, that punctuation goes inside of the, the quotation marks. Um, and then lastly, rule number three, um, the comma goes inside the quotation marks before saying how the character said it. So a lot of times we say things like, hush, Ruthie, hush, Joseph begged her, right? Joseph begged her is how the character said it, right? Or Joseph said, or Joseph screamed, right? Or Ruthie cried. And um, those are all ways that the character says something. So before we, we say how the character said it, we need to put a comma inside the quotation marks. Okay, so that's what that's going to look like when you punctuate that effectively. The last thing I need to see you do with your dialogue is I need to see that you are um, really blending dialogue and description. So I want you to notice here, right, be quiet, the shadow yelled, and then we see the shadow tossing Ruth down on the floor beside Joseph, the shock shut Ruth up, but only for a moment. Then she wailed even harder and louder. The author is not just having a whole page of people talking, right? That's boring. We want to see you blend dialogue and descriptive writing, dialogue and imagery, dialogue and slowing down time, right? Really blend some of those other tools with your use of dialogue. So here's your job today. It's actually um, pretty open-ended. So your flash draft today, your first flash draft of the year, we want you to show us what you can do. We want you to, we want to see um, you write a flash draft just about any intense or frightening moment. So you really can choose any intense or frightening moment. I want you to mimic kind of what you see Alan Gratz doing in this really intense moment um, with Joseph and his little sister Ruthie. So your goal is to write a flash draft that includes both dialogue that is punctuated correctly as well as short, 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 short narrative paragraphs. However, we also want to see you using all of the narrative tools that you have. So really show us what you can do. We're going to be using the this flash draft to really workshop with you and, and talk with you and conference with you about where you're at as a narrative writer and what are some of your goals for the year. So we want to see you using short paragraphs, dialogue. We want to see you creating heat, really creating that intensity and excitement. 
We want to see using imagery or descriptive details. Tell us what the character hears or feels or tastes or touches or smells. We want to see you slowing down time, right? Stretching out those moments to create excitement. We want to see you using figurative language, metaphors, similes, personification. Really show us what you can do today. Have fun.